Good evening and welcome to our evening prayers for Friday the 21st of July. Our opening music was a setting of Psalm 51, that um, great penitential prayer attributed to King David um, and performed in a contemporary version there by the husband and wife duo known as Poor Bishop Hooper as part of their Every Psalm project on YouTube. And we'll be hearing an extract from that psalm shortly. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. To our psalm then, uh, as I say, Psalm 51, verses 10 to 17. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Well, we remain with King David in our reading from 1 Samuel chapter 21. Although I hope you're still with me. It looks my my Wi-Fi is not behaving tonight. I think I think you're back with me. Sorry for the interruption in my signal. Um, we're reading 1 Samuel 21, 1 to 15. David came to Nob, to the priest Ahimelech. Ahimelech came trembling to meet David and said to him, Why are you alone and no one with you? David said to the priest Ahimelech, The king has charged me with the matter and said to me, No one must know anything of the matter about which I send you and with which I have charged you. I have made an appointment with the young men for such and such a place. Now then, what have you at hand? Give me five loaves of bread, or whatever is here. The priest answered, David, I have no ordinary bread at hand, only holy bread, provided that the young men have kept themselves from women. David answered the priest, Indeed, women have been kept from us as always when I go on an expedition be replaced by hot bread on the day it is taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord. His name was Doeg the Edomite, the chief of Saul's shepherds. David said to Ahimelech, Is there no spear or sword here with you? I did not bring my sword or my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. The priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you will take that, take it, for there is none here except that one. David said, There is none like it. Give it to me. David rose and fled that day from Saul. He went to King Ashish of Gath. The servants of Ashish said to him, Is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing to one another of him in dances? Saul has killed his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. David took these words to heart 
and was very much afraid of King Ashish of Gath. So he changed his behaviour before them. He pretended to be mad when in their presence. He scratched marks on the doors of the gate and let his spittle run down his beard. Ashish said to his servants, Look, you see, the man is mad. Why then have you brought him to me? Do I lack, madmen, that you have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we turn to the New Testament and read from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 3, verses 7 to 19a. Jesus departed with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him. Hearing all that he was doing, they came to him in great numbers from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, beyond the Jordan, and the region around Tyre and Sidon. He told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so that they would not crush him, for he had cured many, so that all who had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and shouted, You are the Son of God. But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. He went up the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, to be with him, and to be sent out to proclaim the message, and to have authority to cast out demons. So he appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, and Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, our hymn tonight um, is a, an old favourite, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, which you will find in Rejoice and Sing at number 492, I'll also try and put the words into the comments. There they are. Um, Well-known hymn, which takes us to Christ and his disciples on the shores of, Jet of Galilee. But um, a, a lesser-known version here, I, I hope this, this will be all right. It's Neil Hannon, better known as the Divine Comedy, um, pop star. Um, performing on a BBC music programme in Northern Ireland back in 1998. Found on YouTube and what he chose to perform was this. Dear Lord and Father of mankind Sabbath rest by 
I hope that doesn't get silenced because I'm not sure there's any other way to do it after that. In Tom Wright's book, Mark for Everyone, he comments on the passage we heard from Mark chapter 3 this evening. Uh, and in fact, he reacts to that, that very hymn which he quotes. So here's, here's part of what Tom Wright says about it. After the hurly-burly of the crowds clamouring to be healed, we watch a very different scene, but with the same meaning. There's an old hymn that speaks of the Sabbath rest by Galilee and the calm of hills above. But the hills around the lake were not so much the place where people would go for peace and quiet, like day-trippers in the woods and mountains of Europe or America as the places where people went to plot revolution. And what Jesus now does is among his most revolutionary gestures. Quiz question for you in the next bit. Two questions, in fact. If you know the answers, pop them in the comments. How many members of Parliament or of the Senate or of an equivalent body does your country have? Most people in most countries can answer that question. Similarly, most English people, for instance, couldn't tell you how many counties there are in England. I suspect the same is true in most parts of the world. These numbers don't mean a great deal to us. They don't carry heavy significance. But every Jew knew that there were 12 tribes in Israel, or at least that there had been. These twelve corresponded more or less to the twelve sons of the patriarch Jacob, whose stories are told in the book of Genesis. Ten of the tribes had been lost seven centuries earlier, when the Assyrians invaded and carried them off. But the prophets had spoken of a coming restoration, and a great many Jews were longing for it. A time would come, they believed, when their God would turn everything around, and make them a great nation once again. So, when Jesus called 12 of his followers apart from the crowds and gave them special status and a special commission, nobody who heard of it could miss what he was doing. He was saying, more clearly than any words could have done, this isn't simply a great healing mission. This isn't even simply a time of spiritual renewal. This is the restoration we've all been waiting for. It's happening at every level, spiritual, physical, social and inevitably political. Anyone launching a restoration movement was doing so in the face of the current rulers and the current pressure groups. Jesus went up into the hills for the same reason that others did at the time, to shape his followers into a truly revolutionary group and to do so away from the prying eyes of the authorities. Here, too, there was a darker and deeper side. One of the twelve, Mark tells us, would turn out to be a traitor. But that, too, 
would be taken up within Jesus' revolutionary purpose. His kingdom was not the usual sort, and it would not come by the usual methods. Amen. And may we know renewal and restoration at every level, spiritual, physical, social and political. And well done to Irene for identifying we have 650 MPs and in the ceremonial counties of England at least number 48. Also on Katea, I take it that's 150 representatives in the Dutch Parliament and 75, 75 counties in the Netherlands. So now you know. Let's turn to our time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God and Father, come and dispel the darkness from our hearts, that in the radiance of your brightness we may know you, the one unfading light, glorious in all eternity. Amen. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in our crucified Redeemer we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, shepherd of your pilgrim people, their pillar of cloud by day, their pillar of fire by night. Stir up in us the fire of your love, which shone forth from your Son enthroned on the cross, that we may be cleansed of all our sins, healed of all our infirmities, and be made ready to come into your presence. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. Amen. And in our prayers of intercessions, the refrain is, we pray to the Lord. In the love of God, let us complete our evening sacrifice of praise. For the unity and peace of the Holy Church of God throughout the world, thinking this Friday night in particular of the members, elders and ministers of our United Reformed Churches in Nottinghamshire and all our partner denominations there but thinking also of any church where unity may be endowed. For their unity and peace, we pray to the Lord. For the peace and stability of all peoples and for those in authority, Lord, in particular, we think tonight of those elected to govern us, that they may be given wisdom. We pray to the Lord. For our own country and its national life. For our own countries and their national lives. And for all who live among us. We pray to the Lord. For a blessing on our homes, for our relations and friends and all whom we love, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and the suffering, and for all who minister to their needs, thinking particularly of Jean Schenk in her recovery from her fall, and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care and concern for her. of the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery, 
of Moynier's parish priest, Father Andy. Praying too with the Reverend Clare and Reverend Brian Davison for their daughter Susie. Praying for Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care for her. With Andy for his dad Mike and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. With Irene for John. With Alison for Sangeeta and praying also for all those whose struggle with life is so great that they try over and over again to end it and indeed those they leave behind should they succeed. Let's take a moment of silence so that we can name before God those we especially know to be in need of his healing and his peace. For all these, Lord, we pray to the Lord. And indeed, for all who sleep in Christ, that Christ will remember them in his heavenly kingdom and for all who grieve the passing of loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, we commend our whole life into the hands of God. Amen. And please join in whichever words you know best as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. For our closing voluntary tonight, we turn with thanks to John. Uh, to his daughter Rachel Appleyard at the organ of Rose Hill URC in Chesterfield and this is her own arrangement of the American folk song Shenandoah.
Well then, with apologies for any interruptions you might have had uh, um, coming from my end tonight. I bid you a restful night. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen. Good night.